uh, Gael, and I do hope I pronounce your name correctly, if not, I apologize. Uh, Gael Bernard from uh, EPFL. Um, yeah, you already started sharing your screen, so go ahead. Thank you so much. Yes, you, you pronounce it perfectly. So I'm, I'm Gael from EPFL uh, in Lausanne, Switzerland. So I'm a data scientist, data scientist in the academic data unit. And today I'm really glad to be here to uh, present a method that we are using to basically benchmark institution uh, using embeddings. So um, I will first describe what we call the OpenRx taxonomy. So when I'm talking about the taxonomy, I'm thinking of the topic, field, subfields, and so on, uh, because it, it, they are at the core of what we are doing with the, uh, the, the method that I will present. I will discuss the advantages and limitations that we see in this taxonomy, and then I will describe the, the approach that we are using. So um, the taxonomy is basically a tree um, starting from the domain. So we have four uh, domains and underneath we have fields, subfields and topics. So we have more than 4,000 different topics. So typically if you have a scientific work, uh, typically in adversarial robustness in machine learning, it will be in the subfield artificial intelligence, which is in turn in the field computer sciences and which belong to the domain physical sciences. So having this taxonomy is really helpful. Um, um, I will do a really quick uh, SWOT analysis on uh, using this taxonomy to uh, do bibliometric uh, analysis. Uh, so typically we, we believe that the, the taxonomy is really relevant so we can uh, find topics. All the works that belong to the same topics are usually relevant so they are close to each other. And this is uh, probably due to the fact that OpenRx are using the citation network to discover those topics. Um, we really enjoy the fact that it's granular. So we typically have a way more level of details than what we typically find uh, in Scopus or Web of Science uh, with the more than 4,000 different topics. It's not flat, so it's basically enable uh, doing analysis at different level of granularities. And uh, this strength really uh, allows doing some deeper analysis that might help institutions to identify strengths and weaknesses in their research output. We really enjoy also the, the, the nice integration between the user interface, so the, the basically openalex.org that allows basically to play with the filter easily, that we can easily add institution, um, define the, the, the time range, and uh, doing everything using the user interface, and then quickly uh, be able to download all the data using uh, through the, the, the API. So it really allows us to, to be really quick in our uh, daily analysis. We also see some weaknesses, so it, it's quite young. So, um, and this might mean that uh, it might evolve in the future. Um, we don't know if the, the, the taxonomy will stay stable uh, in, the, in the next few years. Um, let's see how, how it goes. And um, we also see, so the granularity was a strength, but it could also be a weakness. Is what if we don't have uh, enough granular data? And what if we want to do some analysis that are transversal? So I will come back to these two weaknesses later to illustrate them so I, I can be clearer. But uh, basically, there is a risk of um, having a misalignment between what we are trying to analyze and uh, the, the, the information that we have in the taxonomy. So this is really those two weaknesses that the approach that I will describe are trying to address. Um, so for the granularity, typically, um, if the goal is to do a benchmark on natural language processing, so there is a topic natural language processing, which is really helpful because we can quickly identify all the works that are related to natural language processing using the taxonomy. But if we want to benchmark institution and have a more uh, granular information about natural language processing, we don't have the information in the taxonomy. So this is what the method will uh, address. And also for the transversality, we might typically be interested to analyze something which could be transversal. So typically sustainability is something that we will find in uh, a, a lot of different topics in different parts of the taxonomy. Um, so this is also an issue if we want to analyze sustainability, uh, it could be hard to use the taxonomy. 
So the approach that I will present today is an approach in which in the first part, we are selecting the re relevant work. And in the second part, we are clustering uh, to be able to do the analysis that we would like to do. So I will take the example of natural language processing. Um, so we can use the taxonomy to select all the work uh, relevant or that are part of in that are part of the topic natural language processing and then in the second part we can uh, use clustering techniques to discover sub sub topics uh, that do not exist in the taxonomy but that could be useful for the analysis so the step to to implement the method is quite uh, uh, straightforward so in the first step we use the taxonomy and the nice user interface from openalex to download the all the work and then we use embedding techniques. So here we are using transformers. So basically we are taking the title and the abstract of scientific works, and we are turning this text into vectors, numerical vectors, that we can then in the third step uh, cluster so that we can discover a cluster of uh, work uh, that we selected. And uh, the clusters are only numbers. So the last step is to transform those numbers into um, nicely defined title so that we can end up with nice uh, subtopics. So the code that uh, I'm using to do everything is available online. So I put the link here. Um, it's it, it's only just a demo of the kind of analysis that I'm uh, doing on a daily basis. Uh, this is not a library uh, which is really well written. It's just to uh, showcase uh, the, the the method, um, but in the first step, so we can easily download the data, and you can see that um, uh, it, it's quite easy to download all the work on OpenLX for a given uh, time a range um, for the topic natural language processing. So it's only a few lines of code, and we can end up with a CSV, which uh, with all the metadata. And then in the second step, um, we can uh, get the embedding from the text. So basically turning the text into numerical vectors. So to do this, we are using sentence transformer. Uh, in this case, we are using the old MPNet based uh, version two. Um, and from our experiment, it's the one that works well uh, at the moment, but in the future, we can expect to have even more uh, like more powerful uh, sentence, sentence transformer. In the third step, then we can cluster the data. Um, and you can see that embedding and then clustering the data is quite uh, straightforward. And in the fourth step, we are leveraging ChatGPT to describe the clusters. Um, so it's basically taking all the research about natural language processing, then we discover, for instance, 12 different clusters. So to know what the first cluster is about, we take some a sample of work from the first cluster. We are providing the information, so the title and the abstract, to uh, ChatGPT and asking ChatGPT to describe, to give a title for the cluster. Um, this is something that we could do randomly. So we could just sample 20 works in the cluster randomly. But we believe that it, it is more powerful if we use some clustering techniques to send representative from each cluster so that you don't run the risk of sending uh, works that are really similar, but that are not representative of the entire cluster. So we believe that with this approach, we would have a title that are more relevant. And um, as an output, once you do everything, uh, you have subtopics that do not exist in uh, the taxonomy. And these uh, subtopics are all about natural language processing. So to answer the question, what kind of natural language processing institutions are doing around the world, um, using these techniques can uh, ha help have uh, to have some, some answers. So typically for EPFL, we can, for instance, quickly detect that we don't do a lot of natural language uh, processing related to medical uh, NLP application, um, but we do more, for instance, in representation learning and embeddings. So this was the uh, select and cluster method. 
there are, there are alternative approach to select work. So in this presentation, I'm, I'm leveraging the taxonomy from OpenAlex. And again, I think it's really nice because we can go really quick. Uh, but I just wanted to mention that um, I also presented in a webinar a few months ago, another techniques to select a subset of work uh, by using the, the, the concept. So it's a bit more involved. It takes more time, and but it, it allows uh, to, to really precisely define what we mean, for instance, in natural language processing. So it's another alternative approach that could be complementary. And then we can also cluster the work in the same way. So I, yes, thank you so much. Um, so as a conclusion, we really believe that the taxonomy is nice. Uh, we can quickly extract some, some work, identify works that are relevant. And the risk is that the taxonomy may not always align with the, the goal of the analysis. And with like using this uh, method that I'm describing today, we can a little bit trying to take the best of both worlds. So uh, quickly identify works that are relevant and then using clustering techniques to discover subtopics. And yeah, if you, if you are also conducting the same kind of research uh, and you would like to, to exchange on some techniques, ideas, uh, please do not hesitate to, to reach out. And I would be glad to, to exchange some ideas. So thank you so much.